Welcome back and thank you very much for your time. We're getting to the news review segment and uh, the Daily Graphic, uh, Antipim wins MTN Heroes of Change uh, Season 5. Today is World Mosquito Day and we're making progress in Otun Force uh, at some point. Here is Meda, Ashanti Regional Police is telling us, help retrieve $39 million from Dubai company. Men's Gold CEO appeals to Attorney General and African Continental Free Trade Area. Plan fits into Ghana's vision, according to President Kufuado. Daily Guide. Otunfo Sasampohene killed, four grabbed, and ideal finance put customer savings at risk. That's the Bank of Ghana speaking there. And uh, I'm in pain. That's the screaming headline. Government should help me, says number one. President not happy with some state-owned enterprises. And Glowfet opens largest fertilizer plant at Asuboy. And the Ghanaian Times, let's take advantage of the African Free Trade uh, Agreement for socioeconomic transformation of the country. President Kufuado there. He will pay all customers, but Namon, that's what he says. Attorney General, come to my aid. Three napped over Medrov as Ambohenia. President launches SIGA in place of State Enterprises Commission. That means that the DIC and the SEC uh, are no longer enforced. The top 10 price competitive oil marketing companies is in today's edition of the Ghanaian Times. If you grab a copy, you'll find out who they are. The Finder newspaper, 2.3 billion um, Ghana City's negative capital recorded by 22 firms shut down by the Bank of Ghana. Ghana determined to make most out of the African Free Trade uh, Agreement and drought in Ghana worsened by 30% in the last uh, 10 years. A survey conducted by the Finder newspaper. Police arrest three in connection with death of a sample. Henry, 40 Ghanaians deported from U.S. in Saudi Arabia. My guest this morning is uh, Mr. Eric Chum. He is the, a member of the MPP's communication team. Chief, good morning. Thank good you morning. very much for your time. Some call you uh, politics strongest. Is that a name you <laughs> want to <ag> accept? <laughs> well, I haven't heard that. You um, haven't heard? Well, I'm, I'm, I tried, I'm I tried. submitting to you. I try to keep fit. You try to keep fit. Yeah. You so you are not politics strongest. No, I don't think okay. so. Okay, today's uh, World Malay Mosquito Day, and uh, we do know that many people die from malaria, which is quite preventable. I know that your government, for example, has been talking about making Accra the cleanest in Africa by the end of your term, and uh, an unclean society, stagnant water, and all of that will bring about the breeding of mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. What are your quick thoughts about uh, International Mosquito Day? What plans we have? to make it an end or, or make, bring an end to it? Well, good morning, Johnny. Um, good morning to all the viewers out, out there. Mm -hmm. um, it's important that um, we look at the sort of menace that uh, uh, malaria has actually caused. And I think that the statistics actually mm -hmm. suggest that uh, it affects a lot of young kids mm -hmm. between the ages of basically zero and five mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the mortality rate. Now, I think over the period, I mean, as a country, we've tried to educate ourselves. I mean, there's all these ongoing mm -hmm. interventions with uh, issues to do with nets mm -hmm. and all of those things. But again, I think that the sanitation conversation is also very important. Okay. Making sure that we keep our uh, surroundings clean mm -hmm. and be able to support uh, the effort has been undertaken by government in that quest. Again, I think that we've gotten to the point where we should start having conversations around prevention mm. rather than when it actually does happen. I mean, you listen to the radio or you um, watch TV and you see all these ads on malaria prevention mm. and what you have to do when you, you actually attract mal malaria and all of those things. But I think that we need to also probably use the same amount of effort mm -hmm. in terms of also educating ourselves and then preventing it. I know that there are actually some innovative mm -hmm. ways of actually stop stopping it. There's a research recently where they're trying mm -hmm. to find a way of actually uh, neutralizing the malaria causing effect. Mm -hmm. Even though the mosquitoes will be around mm -hmm. but they won't be able to um, to cause malaria. If you look, I think that the other countries that actually have mosquitoes there and they've been able to use the same technology to uh, forestall the incidence of 
malaria. But mm -hmm. we all have responsibilities. I think that as households, as individuals, as government, to be able to get to the point where, especially when, like you said, it's preventable. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we make a lot of noise about all sorts of other things, but really, if you look at the effect, the impact, the negative impact of malaria in terms of even the time that is lost, in terms mm -hmm. of productive mm -hmm. hours, where people, uh, you go to a, uh, primary and secondary health centers, for instance, and you realize that if you take any 100 cases, probably 70 or so, it's malaria related. Mm -hmm. What it means is that in terms of even our development as a nation, the, the incidence of people falling uh, sick by virtue of the fact that they've attracted, uh, contracted mm -hmm. malaria, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really high. Mm -hmm. And so we all have a responsibility. Right. I think that, um, if you like, the uh, education in terms of people using nets and even what has happened in government intervention and giving nets to some uh, communities has helped. Mm -hmm. But I think that we can do more. And as, like you're saying, we're celebrating it in 2019, mm -hmm. we'll also be looking at our scientists and researchers mm -hmm. to also give us hope that uh, this thing will be a thing of the past and let us probably I invest in making sure that it doesn't uh, become some of the things that <coughs> over the period, every year we talk about these things, we've been uh, open to the menace that it has actually caused over the period, but we haven't done too much to stop it. Well, uh, Noguchi came to Africa to help us find uh, an end to malaria and he himself was attacked by malaria and and he got killed in the process. Uh, but, well, that's it. You uh, know, if you read our, our history, um, even the, uh, the missionaries that came here and the colonial uh, authorities mm -hmm. and everything, mm -hmm. a lot of them were actually exactly. uh, dissipated by uh, malaria, malaria and all mm -hmm. of that. So it's something that has been with us over a period. And I think that, like I said, it's about time, especially the ones that we can... <laughs> we can prevent, which is really the ones that are self-inflicted, the, uh, the stagnant waters, the fields around our surroundings, because we all have personal responsibilities in, in as much as it's government's responsibility, I mean, overall, our ultimate responsibility to uh, ensure that the environment is, is clean and is fit for uh, human beings to, to live in. It's also important that we take our personal responsibilities seriously and I mean even at the household level to be able to deal with some of these things because most of these things are actually at our immediate surroundings and if you're able to do that periodically I think that will be able to prevent it. Great you can join us with your thoughts and comments on 020216663 that's 020216663 will be joined shortly by the Honourable Member of Parliament for the Ododododio Constituency, uh, Edwin Nilanti Van der Poer, he's joining us shortly. But yesterday, the uh, beleaguered businessman, Nana Pia Mensa of Men's Gold fame, uh, held a press conference in Accra to uh, address some key concerns of his customers and persons who have been particularly uh, also worried about the, the fallout from uh, his business and how it affects people. I'm sure you do know by now that all his assets and bank accounts have been frozen. Uh, he is currently in court. He has been in incarceration in Dubai for over eight months or maybe nine months. Uh, but now he's calling on the Attorney General to, to help him to retrieve some $39 million owed him by a certain Dubai company. Ni, welcome. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I'm sure you can take a quick bite on the malaria uh, world, world mosquito day and, and then let's make progress from there. We'll talk about number one and fallouts. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let me say I apologize sincerely for getting here a bit late. Mm. The traffic was a bit un unexpected, mm. uh, even though I left the house at 5.30. Um, let me take the opportunity of saying uh, good morning to our cherished viewers and also my constituents and especially to wish all parliamentary aspirants of the National Democratic Congress going to Congress this coming Saturday the best of luck. How, how is the grounds in uh, Ododododo? 
I'm running on the post. <laughs> That's I'm good. Yeah, There's money to That's engineer. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> no, no, I think, I think he's doing. He's over. He's, he's, he's my senior. If, if, <laughs> if you visited, if you visited Odo Odo Odo, do, you know that he's I'm paved. There all the time. He's paved a lot of the the lungu lungus. So <laughs> he's even coming there. He's, he's I have boys there for nefarious activities. No, no, no. Very good. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to nurture some boxes. Er, Eric. Oh, okay. <laughs> Eric, I'm telling you that he's he's paved. He's paved a lot of the lungu lungus in Odo Odo Odo. So I'm not surprised he's running the post. Let me. Let me say that, um, just as Eric said, um, mm -hmm. eliminating marriage there was a um, national concern. It should be everybody's concern. Mm -hmm. I have always said that um, when a mosquito is coming to bite you, mm -hmm. it will not distinguish between whether you are NPP or MPP. Right. It will bite you. Mm -hmm. And I said fighting malaria should always be a national priority for everybody. Not only malaria, but every national disease. Mm -hmm. Any disease at all, mm -hmm. uh, malaria, cholera, anything at all should be avoided as much as possible. I wish that we can help in preventing diseases mm -hmm. than being curative for such diseases. And as you know, when we were, very ki we were kids, mm -hmm. one of the most important uh, things we were taught is prevention is better than cure. Right. And as such, um, I get worried when we have situations where we have stagnant waters mm -hmm. at places, um, we have pool of waters, we have drains that are choked, we have, you know, it becomes mm -hmm. disturbing. Um, for some time now, I think Ghana has always spent much more money mm -hmm. in trying mm -hmm. to cure uh, or to uh, provide medicinal mm -hmm. or, or other curative things for pe people who have been affected by malaria. Mm -hmm. Rather than spending money mm -hmm. to make sure we build a social infrastructure mm -hmm. that will make sure that we don't have pool of waters okay. at places, we don't have choke garters, mm -hmm. we don't have people dumping refuse illicitly at places mm -hmm. that will create the, mm -hmm. the, the, or fester the growth of malaria. So I think it is important that we take a look at our, our, the way we do things mm -hmm. in our environment. And also, the assemblies should be up and doing mm -hmm. in their management of sanitation okay. in the areas. And once mm -hmm. that is done, it becomes our utmost priority. We will spend less on malaria prevention mm -hmm. than we spend on providing the medicines and the anti-malaria injections and things at the various hospitals. And I think it's, it's a killer. Mm. And whether we like it or not, a lot more of our children are dying through malaria than any other disease. Let, let's look at the uh, National Sanitation Day, for example, instituted by your government. It seems to have waned um, the, the level of participation <laughs> and, if you like, the resources that are pushed towards it is not the best. I mean, it was helping. Uh, but now we, you can't really say much about it. How does that come to you? Well, last time I, 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 I remember I, I gave Eric an advice to be given to the president. That you gave me an advice. Yes, I remember we were on a, on a, on a program. I think uh, it's a GH or something. And I, I told you that anybody who gets run to the president should tell him that the, in spite of all the mistakes he's done, the worst was taking away sanitation from the Ministry of Local Government mm. and establishing another ministry. Um, you don't think that that was a it is it is not a prudent measure. It is not the policy is wrong. You see, because it's done that, the assemblies who are primarily responsible for the maintenance of sanitation in their mm -hmm. consequences, mm -hmm. because they don't get the budget now, the budget goes to the Ministry of Sanitation, right. Water and Sanitation. Mm -hmm. The assemblies don't get the budget, okay. so they are their energies towards sanitation management mm -hmm. in the assemblies is waning. Right. I'm a ranking member for local government. We've been through a lot of the districts. And I tell you, point blank, they are not too active when it comes to issues of sanitation management now. Mm. Because they don't have the resources. Because okay. the budget is, is, is dwindled. Mm. The budget that is supposed to go to assemblies to maintain sanitation is going to a Ministry of Water and Sanitation. And they don't have the structure at the local level to mm. be able to embark upon this aggressive sanitation thing. Mm -hmm. And also, I thought that the national sanitation there was going to be a pure national policy because it was a policy that was derived from consultation with the National House of Chiefs, mm. the Regional House of Chiefs, and some sanitation stakeholders. Mm. So I thought we were going to put politics aside and drive it. But uh, because it was something initiated by Mahama's government, it's not good enough. So it's been thrown away. Did, did the local assemblies own own it? Yes. Did they own it? Yes. Really? So it was almost, in fact, I know that up to today, there are some areas 
that's still they continually observe it mm. every first Saturday of the month. They they observe it. Right. I know that my electoral area, my uh, constituency like this, yeah. almost assemblymen do national sanitation almost every first Saturday. I know some parts of the country recently when we went on a tour where they say they continually do the national sanitation on every Saturday. Mm. You see, in the olden times, those things were like what we have in a local parlance, communal labor. Right. Every month. Right. People do communal labor. Mandatory. Yes. It's, you, you cannot do anything. You can't mm. go to farm. You can't do anything. In fact, those who used to even... Um, Seven Days Adventist Church were even forced to be mm. part of it, mm. and then there was negotiations. Then they moved theirs to Sunday. To Sunday, okay. You understand? So it is. It's a form of we helping ourselves mm. to prevent things mm. like malaria mm. within our communities. So it was just an adaptation of what used to prevail mm. into mm. our modern day mm. architecture of sanitation management. And it was good because that day, for example, when we went to Kwau. I, I did the work with the late Riafi Pepra, mm. the chiefs, and almost everybody. Mm. So there was no politics. The NDC chairman, the SCPP chairman, everybody was there. Uh, we used the political parties to mobilize their okay. people okay. to do the work. Mm. So it, it, it's a time that we can force com cohesion mm. in order to tackle a very urgent national issue than to always sit on radio and television and have divergent mm. views on simple issues mm. and become so aggressive. The, aggress the, the, the aggression we use to advance our political you know opinions mm. we should channel that same energy and aggression into addressing social issues like sanitation okay eric the well, uh, uh, honorable says that uh, he's taking a job says so look, yes, of all the mistakes of all the mistakes yeah, that uh, well, president kufado has made but quickly it, let's run let's look at the key issue you mentioned about funding for the ministry itself and how the local assemblies are not getting the oxygen to operate and if you will, assessment of the National Sanitation Day thus far. I know some communities, because of the work I do on Community Connect, mm -hmm. where they lock up their shops anyhow, um, and they don't come, they don't turn up to clean. But after 12, they show up to open up their shops, whether the place is clean or not. <laughs> well, I, I think that's unfortunate. He was talking about us um, taking away the politics mm -hmm. and discussing it dispassionately. A politically, but he went that route. To be no, honest with you, I think that um, I give an advice. <laughs> <laughs> I give an advice. To be honest with you, I, I think that the wisdom behind setting up a ministry predominantly to look at the sanitation is a smart move. Uh, you can sit here and say that maybe um, it hasn't come up to full scratch. Has it, has it come up I'm to just, full I'm scratch? I'm just saying, I think you can say that, but has, even has it come in, up the last, in the last few weeks or so, um, around major cities in this country, I have seen uh, some litter bins that have actually been distributed and actually... It's been Which done. are not being serviced well. But you can say that, but it's... You, so you start from somewhere. Okay. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So and I think that... A program and you, and I, I, I think that you can... Once you, you, you start with prov the provision of the bins, and you can activate a system where you pick it up. What is the one step? Like I'm saying that it's a responsibility that it behoves on everybody along the value chain in terms of personal, household, institutions, mm. government itself, and everything for us to be able to get there. Now, because we've been doing this whole thing using the local government mm. structure mm -hmm. uh, over a period, and still we were having challenges. The local government, the authorities will also tell you that they were still having challenges with that. And I think that the wisdom is to uh, focus on using a particular ministry to be able to channel that. Has I, that been achieved? Maybe not, but I think that if you look at it in the last few months, if you ask me, um, progress has been made. Can we do more? Of course, yes, we can. Uh, it's a collective responsibility for everybody for us to get to that point. So I don't think that the president made any mistake at all. The, the National Sanitation Day in focus. The now. National Sanitation Day again. A and the funds they, for in, the in, 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 like in my constituency, for instance, and in my district, uh, people still do it. We still uh, partake in that. Um, maybe it is not akin to what the NDC tried to do, but there are people who essentially has become the part of them, the part of mm -hmm. them has become the norm where every other Saturday or so mm -hmm. they actually undertake these exercises. It shouldn't stop there. The commentary that has come is that even when they have done so at a point, 
they had issues with the authorities helping them with the their silt, the, the, mm. uh, their sales mm. being uh, carted away, and those things have actually been uh, dealt with. So we are, we are going to make uh, have some they been work. dealt with. Yeah, because you, you most still find them on the shoulders. Of no, the but gutters. you can find them, and that's what I'm saying. That I won't say that we are out of the woods in terms of um, if you want to do a comparison as to what pertains elsewhere. Right, but in the last few months, if you ask me, in areas that I have been, in areas where I have seen that these bins have been provided, um, a lot of work has gone into that. Um, we have issues. Sanitation, just about just the garbage. We have a lot of uh, public toilet facilities mm. that has been built. Mm. There are households that have been given opportunities. And there's a, toilet I always, at half price. I always, yes, I also go to do, 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 do. I know that he knows that there are some that has actually mm. been provided in its constituency and all that. So all, are the, all these things are part mm. of the entire, if you like, sanitation architecture. For, for, for example... So, the, and the, even this... Um, uh, education in terms of what people do at our various beaches mm. and all mm. of those things. A lot of work has gone Look, into uh, it. Eric, some, some of the problems Mr. That we Kofiada have, at the time yes. when he was Minister for uh, Sanitation, Water and Sanitation, mm. mentioned to us at the banquet hall, we went for a presser, and he told us about sanitation marshals and all of that. Mm -hmm. Where in 2019, I've not seen a single sanitation marshal, what would be called a town council or the town well, council. I, I have so, so Cecilia Dapa is there now, and, and they're still not. Present. I wouldn't say that I know everything that pertains at the Ministry of Water and Sanitation. I'm saying that I'm using what I have seen. Well, that's I a have, promise. I'm telling you about the yeah, promise that, that was made. Yeah, that is fine, but I, I, I would be able to give you a bit more clarity in terms of where we are with the okay. uh, marshals and okay. all that. But I know for a fact that at that particular level where issue, we had issues to do with the bins being carted and all of those things, a lot of work has gone into that. I know that government has made a lot of investment mm -hmm. in provision of toilets, some even household toilets for uh, families that do not have to start with and then the community ones as well. Okay. The education is ongoing. Mm. I listen to radio all the time. I think one of your uh, radio stations actually plays those mm. ads in right. terms of asking people to behave in a particular way. It's a garbage out campaign. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So those are things that maybe if you add all of it together, okay. it, 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 it points to uh, an attempt to make sure that we move away from that. Okay. But you all have even things to do with, we're talking about malaria the nets, what they do mm. with the children, making sure that uh, their surroundings are clean. Mm. Because even your immediate surroundings, mm. so for instance, even within the compound, that one, government cannot come there right. and do anything about it. Or even if you have um, uh, water, mm. which is actually stagnant water within mm. your m immediate environments mm. and all of those things. Those are the responsibilities of the various household households or the individuals that live in those neighborhoods. Mm. But Again, I will not sit here and say that the ultimate responsibility does not lie with government to mm -hmm. ensure that we live in an environment where, especially when these things are preventable. But by, by the close too. of 2020, President Kufuado says Accra will be the cleanest in, in Africa. Uh, uh, what you do see, you see? What do you see? You see, I think that when sometimes, 2019 sometimes, in, sometimes, in August. sometimes we look at these things from the, just the narrative. But the truth of the matter is that these are things that are progressive. You go through one state to the other. You need to put system. I was at the uh, launching of the recycling facility of mm -hmm. Zoom Lion around mm -hmm. the Kolebu, right? And I, I in my in your, your system, yes. Mm -hmm. And looking at that, and even what they are trying to do in terms of replicating it across mm -hmm. the country, where the same garbage that we throw away that causes all the menace and everything is taken through a process. Okay. That would make sure that one is actually R wrap up for me. Let's it's search. used mm. and then it's actually creating employment and all of those. Those are, ba if you like, baby steps. But I think that once we're able to do so, and there's also a clear commitment from government to support that particular agenda, we'll make progress. The, the clear, the clear support from government will be the the disbursement of the one million Ghana cities that has been accrued in the environmental excise tax uh, demanded from producers of plastics. That money is still sitting in the consolidated account. Yeah, the authority I, I has think, not yeah, been set yeah, up. Yeah, and it's no, no. You're baiting me too. So well, I have, I'm not I baiting you. I'm telling you what I have, it is. I have my position. That the law says that I you're have not my done. position on plastics. And some countries have been extremely decisive in coming out with the. Uh, I, I had one of the. Um, I think that uh, one of the AGI members made a clear case that uh, any attempt to even ban plastics would. 
Yeah. So I'm, I'm not calling no, for a ban. No, no, no. I'm just saying I'm that. Saying I'm, that I'm saying that there's currently but, one million but, Ghana cities sitting down, but, uh, as has been deducted but, for or demanded from yeah, plastic but, producers. Yeah. And the president is supposed to set up an authority yes. to ensure the disbursement of We even have an electronic that, waste. That money yeah, I mean, is sitting down. And I'm, I, I don't know why it's sitting I, down. Well, I would, if, I if, we, know. if we release that money, we can set up many more plants okay. and one recycle million, more, million more plastic. Cities. You don't believe well, it can No, no, be. but that's what I'm saying. That, <laughs> But the whole issue to do with plastics and the whole environmental conversation, okay. you have to be dispassionate let, let, Let's go. Let's go, let's go at it another time. Thank you. Decisive let, let's do number one. Let's plastics. do number one. Number one is asking uh, the Attorney General to, and, and yesterday at the press conference, I read a bit of it. It says, uh, um, he says uh, as an act of good faith, uh, oh, well, it says, um, at the news conference in Accra yesterday, I'm reading from the graphic, by the way. At the news conference in Accra yesterday, Mr. Mensah pleaded with the Attorney General and <coughs> Minister of Justice to assist him make full recovery of the amount owed men's gold by Horizon uh, Royal Diamond in Dubai. As an act of good faith, we are willing to engage the Attorney General uh, office on the best uh, possible way for them to aid men's gold by employing international lawyers, diplomatic relations to ensure that we achieve this objective. As of now, Brew Marketing Consult, Men's Gold, and I cannot credit or debit any bank account in Ghana. And uh, this is why it is highly imperative to consider this kind of request, as I believe government shares in our resolve and will do all that uh, which is needful in our quest to satisfy the populace who are our customers. This is what Namwan is saying. He says, come to my aid, I'm in pain. Ni? Uh, is this uh, plea tenable? Well, first... Uh, my brother, let me say that um, this number one issue, not only number one, this so-called cleanup mm. of the financial sector of this economy is really uh, a problem. Why is it? It's brought a lot of untold hardships on a lot of families. Just yesterday, a very good sister of mine who has been in the UK for close to about 14 mm. years came to me virtually. In fact, I don't know what, uh, in fact, this morning I have to call to find out her situation. Mm. She was distraught because she's invested close to 400,000 Ghana cities mm -hmm. in one of the microfinance companies, Landmark, mm -hmm. that has been closed. And, and it's a whole life. It's a, all the struggles we've been through in the UK. She was advised, you know, mm -hmm. to, to invest. And she thought that it's better to invest home. Mm. So she did. Um, so many people come to you, and sometimes it's difficult. Mm. And it's bringing untold hardships on us, some of us, the MPs. Because people today, universities have opened. Mm. People mm. need to pay their children school fees, mm. but their monies are locked up. So they come to you, the MP, putting pressure on you and to you assist have, you them. You have to pay. To assist them. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's an unbearable situation. Yesterday, I sat down quietly and listened to the press conference. I could see a, 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 an atmosphere of discontentment in the faces of the minority, majority of the supporters mm. and the customers who were there. They thought that they were going to be given hope. Right. But they left the place with their situation even more worse. Um, this whole number one thing right from the beginning, I said that the management of the situation was poor. Mm. On whose side? On the past side of government. Mm. Government foresaw what will happen. Mm. The steps that should have been taken in order to safeguard the interests mm. of customers were not taken. What rather some people close to government engage in was baseless propaganda and lies, especially on the issue of a jumping bail mm. and all those mm. pure lies just to soften people mm -hmm. and to take the pressure of government onto number one as a uh, men's good as an institution mm -hmm. and i thought that was poor today i sit here and i say look this is somebody who in a way has assisted even government functionaries how do you know this men's good nam mission has assisted the first lady's office in putting up the pediatric unit of kolebu mm. That's not the only national program that Metna Mission has invested in. Mm. So if this guy was, was investing in such things that are close to the executive, to the president, and there are issues bothering on how he's managing 
people's funds. Government should have been more proactive and prudent in a way of making sure that the supervisory role of the central bank and other institutions were involved in. How should the government have gone about it? You see, <coughs> there's something we call protection of deposits. Okay. It's either you make sure you advise the person through the supervision role of the BOG mm. to at least fence off an amount that could be a sort of insurance or guarantee mm. into an escrow account or so. So in case of any eventuality, mm. you could do that. You could fall on. That was not done. Today, it is not about what happened. It's about how do we resolve the problem right. of especially the millions of customers. Mm. I think that government has no business continuing holding number one's accounts. Why don't you think the matter is before court? The, you see, it's not a matter of before a matter being before court. Today, whether we like it or not, what was before court? His actions, as somebody retailing gold when he's not supposed to be doing that, mm -hmm. somebody supposed to be taking money when he's not supposed to. Be, those are the issues. But right. how do we pay the customers? Mm. The court issue can proceed. Whether it's a criminal case or a <coughs> civil case, mm. it can proceed. But how do we resolve the thousands or a million of customers who have got their monies locked up? Because day in and day out, people are dying. People are taking, they are taking their own lives mm. because they, they, they cannot bear the, 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 the PR of the of the company uh, Niyama Matthew you had earlier said that look 39.6 uh, million was going to be pay, able to pay about 60% of the customers yeah. so so this, what happens to the this money million? this money i'm saying that this money even this money if it's released the account has been frozen so that, that how, he need an account could he could he not have gone to a bank to say do a transfer for me into another account for example but that's what he's calling on government to do that's what he's calling on government he, to do. He's saying that he, because his accounts have been frozen, even if the money is sent into his account, he cannot it access cannot them. It cannot help. So, but, but the bank could do a draft for him to get the see, money because anyhow. of the sensitivity of the issue, mm. today whatever is there, like the same way we are handling the microfinance and institutions, mm. setting up, getting a liquidator to see how mm. the accounts of people could be paid mm. deposits could be refunded mm. to people it's the same it's the same thing we should do okay. with the issue of number one mm. Today, let's find out let tell us when you froze his accounts how much was in it okay you've taken over some of his assets if you should liquidate those assets how much how much will it cost if we add this 30, 39 point something million mm. dollars to it mm. how much will it cost will you be able to pay people okay if he's not able to pay the, you've audited accounts mm. of people who are have their monies with men's gold mm. how many are they what's the total amount if we put these assets together of number one mm. how much will it be okay. will it be able to pay all these people mm. if he's not able to pay all this then how do okay. we resolve the issue you see we must be looking at solutions now okay. because the customer out there yesterday was looking for solution he was looking for, and number one said that if my accounts is frozen if this money if the government helps me to get a 39 million i'll be able to pay you he seems to be making a couple of demands one he says release me let me pay the money now he's released and he says facilitated for me to be able to pay them uh some a school of thought will say well if you facilitate he will make another demand of government what do you see you see that's what i'm saying the government must be responsible government is the one that acts in such situations in the interest of the citizens mm -hmm. Government should come out and say, Look, yes, I'm ready to help salvage the deposits of Ghanaians. Mm. These are the measures I'm going to use. Okay. One, I want to secure your money that is already secured as a result of freezing your account mm. is there. We're going to facilitate you getting the $39 million. Okay. We add it together. Mm. It's going to be, let's say, $60 million. Okay. People who deposit through our auditing, we've seen that people, the amounts owed to people mm -hmm. is about 50 million okay. or it's about 70 million. Mm -hmm. We should know. So if 60 million, we will be able to pay people mm -hmm. and then we have this remainder, this balance. Mm -hmm. How do we resolve the balance? These are the issues which we're looking at now. It's not a matter of what happened. Whatever mm -hmm. happened, whoever number one is, if number one was a devil, mm -hmm. In fact, the devil played with the president. Mm. 
The devil played the first lady. The devil played with ministers of state. So we have no no excuse anymore as of today. Okay. Because when he was walking through the corridors of power, mm -hmm. people didn't know. Some of the people tell me there was no way they would have put their money into that business if they had not seen him becoming part of the president's entourage, mm -hmm. taking photographs with mm -hmm. the president, the president himself assigning him responsibilities, funding the first lady's programs, making him tourism ambassadors, mm -hmm. and all those things. So it's, it's the sort of exposure that we gave to him so that special. added to the credibility that you know so you just mentioned the word i didn't want to use it mm. in fact government is complicit by association in this particular instance mm. so we must be seen to be taking action that will help at least assuage the the the, the pain mm. the anger and the difficulties and the hardships that we've pushed the customers of uh, uh, men's gold what, was that enough for him not to have been able to give a timeline for payment owing to the fact that there have been previous timelines in the past i don't that, think that as of today i don't think as of today number one should be the person to be me seriously speaking if i were in government it's no it's no more about number one okay it's about the thousands of Ghanaians whose deposits are there how do i resolve their problem all that they are looking for is their money okay so eric, they are not looking for any more interest they are looking for their deposit their deposits okay eric is government willing to to uh, bow to the request of Nam One now? He says, uh, in good faith, he wants to collaborate with the Ministry of uh, Justice and Attorney General to, to be able to deal with this. Well, um, I think that, again, my senior here has made some really, um, if you like, disingenuous statements. One, <laughs> it's not true that uh, Nam One has done anything with the First Lady. It's also not true that there has been any um, taxate complicity from the president or that one had any association with the president. And you see, when you use that logic, it's, it de debases the conversation. The, the first lady didn't let get me support tell us, from, listen, from let, me tell, let me Let me tell, let me ask. Let, 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 let me, listen, let me, I, I, there's... No, I, I want us to, to, to I, iron out those I, ones There's first. nothing. Let me make my point. You hmm. didn't ask him any questions. No, I asked him. You did, but let me finish. Let me make my point. Because we saw the publication. I would, you, the but, but you can see the publication. I'm saying that. Recently in Kumasi, a gentleman who is now a suspect in the kidnapping of the Canadian, Canadian girl. Girls, right. There's pictures of him with President, former President Mahama everywhere. Oh. Does he make him a He's a security of Manchia. Yeah. And the pajama no, goes no, I, I was no, part no, of the entourage. Okay. 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 Me allow him. Me allow him. There's so many other examples, plectrum examples that I can give. There's a picture of former President Mahama with this guy called Andy Solomon. Andrew Solomon. Covering everywhere. Does he make him homosexual? You see, when you do these things, you debase the conversation. There's an entourage, and we've had this conversation over a period where mm -hmm. an entourage that wanted to, I think, uh, sponsor the Premier League mm -hmm. goes to uh, the presidency, mm -hmm. and because the company at the time was interested in sponsoring, he was one of the people, and that that you, that actually makes it a tax. I mean, refer you to that, 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 one, one, one million, one million. No, no, dollars and then yes. the guy owns a radio station or a, a media. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. house mm -hmm. and decides that he wants to be part of a tourism drive and that makes him a taxate, uh, a, a taxate connivance from government to try mm -hmm. and implicate everybody. In any case, mm -hmm. it was clear and even it's under your Rebecca, watch. What about the, let, me, let me finish. What about let, me, let, me, let, me, let me finish. Even under, under, your, in, no under, your watch, under your watch, this claim that he's made, mm -hmm. under your watch, as far back as 2014, 2015, mm -hmm. the Bank of Ghana mm -hmm. had put out communication mm -hmm. in the daily graphic and all of those things, mm -hmm. warning people from not doing business yes. mm -hmm. with uh, Men's Gold or Men's Bank at the mm -hmm. time in respect to deposit taking. Right. And it moved all the way to that point. And you see, when you look at the sequence of events, I saw the press uh, conference that he did yesterday, and at best I would describe it as disingenuous. Why, to start with, so? one, this whole conversation surrounding uh, a frozen bank account mm -hmm. and the fact that he has an, an account and if the account is not <coughs> uh, uh, defrozen, mm -hmm. uh, he can't receive money. It's ridiculous. It's the most that, ridiculous. Does he have a way out? Yeah, because it, it, this is, if it's this an international transaction and well and truly, and I had even com conversation from one of the lawyers of the uh, customers mm -hmm. and saying that if you have a judgment from 
the, the uh, Emiratis. Emirati. Mm -hmm. Show everybody where the judgment says that you are entitled to 39 million, for instance. And let's, again, if he's calling on government, I don't think that government will be uh, uh, opposed to supporting him in terms of getting those money. If real, well and truly, there's 39 million dollars. Again, the conversation around how we go to this point is at the point when SEC made a categorical statement that he should be taking deposit. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, within that split second, an entity that was meant to be as innovative as he claimed that to be had actually run out of money. In fact, when SEC wrote he, to him, they, he, uh, the, the lawyer at the time, Kwame Kufu, wrote that they, went, they, they don't understand SEC's directive to comply with exactly it. Exactly my point. I'm saying that. So really, for me, I will not sit here and even pretend and change my position. This thing has been a Ponzi scheme from day one. How do we solve the problem? So How do we the, solve the, the game, problem? It's a government position. How does he get his 39 Go million? But, but that, that, he has to get his 39 million. He has to provide enough evidence to suggest that. Well, literally, there's 39 million to be claimed through the court proceedings. He says, release my accounts. Yeah, but that, that, is, that is preposterous to start with. How is that? Because so? there's a certain investigation that is ongoing. Mm -hmm. And getting money into an account through a banking system does not necessarily require you to have a personal account. If well, truly that it is. And the, in any case, he should have gone on to tell the whole country, how much money is in those accounts to start with? Me says, look, I uh, mean, uh, so really, uh, you have, you have, is, is you have frozen my assets, try, try let's liquidate issues, them, issues, let's take the 39, issue, and yes. let's look at issues, how we can yeah, lump all the funds that's, together, those are things how that, much it comes that to, is, and how much that, it That's a repetition of the events to start with, because in terms of liquidation of his, his assets, it takes Yoko has as, uh, uh, possession of those right, assets. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, if he goes through the legal regime, he cannot come here and now uh, stampede a legal process that's already been taken just because it's NAM1 when the thing has actually already been activated. There are civil proceedings ongoing as we speak. The customers <laughs> are <laughs> entitled <laughs> to civil process. But so, are you saying that? Because an, a situation has happened, we should throw our constitution no, away. He says he's we should in pain. discard he's in pain. the issue of Do you rule, feel that one's pain? For I do not feel his pain. Hughes, I feel the Hughes, pain of the I, customers who Eric, have lost their the, money. Eric, okay. Eric, me and who you are not he you. keeps finding Eric, excuse upon excuse Eric, not to pay their money too. Those so are the ones that I feel they are facing. Mm. Yeah, so you cannot Eric, sit here I've seen so and say that because. Eric, I just want to make one point. You spoke for 10 minutes and I was Look, I've seen so many civil cases where parties will be in court. Okay. The court will say, in order for us to safeguard this particular account, right. okay, the case will go ahead, mm -hmm. but this is what we are going to do with accounts. Okay. When we finish and the case is determined, then we know how yeah, to do this. Right. These things are done. No, so is he saying to us that if the, uh, the accounts are defrozen today, there's money in those accounts to pay the customers to start. He says, uh, well, yesterday, a question but, was asked of him as to how much his companies are worth, uh -huh. you know, was worth before SEC pulled the plug mm. and how they are SCC worth now. And he couldn't say. did not yeah. pull the plug. And I think that for you as journalists, you also have to be very... SEC didn't pull the plug. No, SEC said that you can continue to do your gold as same business. Okay. You are not supposed to be taking deposits. It says shut, down the, point, gold, shut down the gold vault. What, what uh, did that, at that mean? Point, at that shut point, down the gold vault. The man is what, in what, gold what, business. No, no, no. It says no, shut down your gold it vault. It says that you can continue. Okay. And if you can find any uh, categorical statement from SEC that says that shut down your gold vault, I would I'll come back and mm. debate you on that particular. There's nothing like he that. Said that yesterday. SEC, yeah, but that is a lie. SEC says that stop taking deposits because you're not a deposit taking entity. What what hope is so, there for the customers so, now? Yeah, but that is where we have to. What go. is the hope? So you can't allow us as a nation, what, what, a whole nation as what big is the as hope? Ghana, what is the to hope allow for the customers Nam now? One to come and who drink everybody? What, what is the and hope? Now go and do a press conference and then you get my senior e brother e Eric. And Eric, what's the, what's the hope the for, the, for, for, for the customers? The point is that the customers and that is government's position. The gov the customers have the duty or they have the right to go through that civil process. What government is? They, yes, it's true. It's ongoing. Government is also pursuing the criminal angle. Again, if the properties that have been uh, taken, mm -hmm. that would be, uh, if it goes through the, the legal process, it has to be liquidated and everything. And well and truly, if he he has shown that commitment that he has thirty nine million dollars somewhere and gives enough information and there's enough uh, 
yeah, candor in that particular regard. Yes, you will facilitate that so that monies will be paid. So, but in this so, case, so in the meantime, what do the customers do? Do they continue because Tetsu and I have died already? Uh, you know, no, some but, more are bedridden. It is unfortunate that anybody will lose their lives in regard to these things. These things that really, as far as I'm concerned, are preventable. But you see, when you ask of government to do something, it has to also be within a certain remit. It has mm. to be within the confines of our constitution, rule of law. Mm. And that's why I'm actually scandalized that you say that, oh, even though a process has been activated, we should throw it away no. and go and defraise it away. Just because he, 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 he has that. suggested yeah, so. Many I am saying that. An that, that, that said we can exactly. do that concurrently. So let's do that. So the government let's should do, do it. It's government we should do it. No, but the thing is, government should do what? Yes, it's government who, because but right now, the issue is government that has gone to court. The individual has not even provided government with yeah, information. So I'm saying government has an audit department, we have the attorney general's department, we have all these institutions. Let's use the institutions to make sure that we protect the interests of the customers. Okay. Let's say that, okay, fine, we set up an escrow account. Mm. He's, we've liquidated his assets. That money is going into it. If this oh, thirty-nine million, million government to, should find out from the Ghana embassy. I don't in, even know in, why in you guys are. Oh, no. you're focused on this thirty-nine million. No, no, no. I, I would. I you, you don't see. You I want to don't see evidence. think that you want to there see proof. Any thirty-nine million then dollars anywhere? Why do anywhere? we have? Why do we okay. have a mission in Saudi? He should just. No, but I don't. I, I, you want to see evidence? I want to see evidence of the thirty-nine million dollars. Million. If he believes the thirty-nine, or if he says that it's thirty-nine million dollars, all that has to happen. There has to be a clear. Proof. And I'm saying we, from have, the we have a mission that has actually stated the mission, categorically the that mission cannot this is sit okay. out there. Yeah. Gentlemen, the thank you. Cannot sit thank out you there very much. Let the debate continue where you are. Neil Antin Van der Poel is the honourable member for the Ododododo constituency. He is running on a post come Saturday and hopefully he intends to uh, stick in parliament and uh, represent his people in Ododododo. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your that time. <laughs> and uh, Eric Chum is a member of the MPP's communication team. Thank you very much.